All right, is this better? Yeah, now it's full screen. In, Perfect, well, in thank Google you Chrome, so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool, thank you, Jenny. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about the Open Science Hardware Events Funding Program, but first I will share a little bit more about GOSH and what Open Science Hardware is. Oh. So really quickly, uh, a, a short definition of Open Science Hardware. Uh, this is adapted from the Open Source Hardware um, definition from Oshawa, uh, but adapted so that it fits science hardware as well. Uh, so quickly, science hardware just encompasses the tools and machinery that we use for scientific endeavors. Um, so for example, you can think of a microscope or an environmental sensor. Um, and open science hardware uh, really touches on the fact that it's science hardware that is open source. So it's free to use, change, study, or distribute. Um, so yeah, just a quick little intro to, to what open science hardware is in case any of you may not be familiar with it. Um, so then what the GOSH community is, is we are a global community of researchers, hardware developers, artists, activists, um, engineers, and so much more uh, that are just trying to make open science hardware ubiquitous by 2025. Um, so the G in GOSH stands for gathering because it really represents this aspect that as a community, we are convening people from all across the world that are trying to make open science hardware and also push forward open science hardware to make it ubiquitous by 2025. Um, and I do also want to note that the G in GOSH sometimes stands for global. Um, so it represents the fact that this is a global community of, of practitioners as well. Um, so yeah, sometimes you'll see gathering for open science hardware and sometimes you'll see global open science hardware. Uh, but both of those things still represent GOSH. Um, and just really quickly, some of the things that GOSH has accomplished since it started in 2016. Um, so obviously, the biggest thing that GOSH has done is we've had four gatherings that have taken place all across the world. Uh, the first one was in Switzerland in 2016. Then we met in Chile in 2017, China in 2018. Uh, and then obviously, we did have the pandemic, so we took a break for a little bit. Uh, but this last year, we finally convened again in Panama. Um, and then we've also written like extensive documents. We have a manifesto that was created in 2017, which shows all of our uh, values as a community. Uh, but then in 2017, we collectively wrote a roadmap um, just to describe the certain actions that are needed in order to make open science hardware ubiquitous by 2025. And what's really unique about that document is that it was collectively written by the community um, at that event and afterwards. Um, yeah. And then a couple of other things that we've done just in recent years is we do have a series of policy briefs that we published um, aimed specifically at technology transfer offices, international policymakers, and also research funders. Um, and similar to what we'll be discussing today, in the past, we did do funding calls for regional open science hardware events and also funded a collaborative hardware development program. Um, so just a quick snapshot of what the GOSH community is and what it looks like. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to, oh, actually first, before I hand it to Jenny, I do just wanna share that we have a really awesome welcome package that I will drop into the chat. Um, but if you wanna know more about the GOSH community, this resource is great. It has links to different projects you can see, the GOSH newsletter that you can sign up to and all sorts of fun stuff. But with that, I will hand it to Jenny. Great, thanks very much, Bree. So I'm just gonna go over a bit more specifically the Open Science Hardware Events Funding Program. Um, we've had some previous rounds of events funding and this one has a slightly different focus. This was one of the reasons we thought it would be useful to, um, to cover that. So next slide, Bree. So the Science Events Funding Programme is aimed at uh, groups that want to host an event for supporting open science hardware and really kind of advancing the conversation in open source hardware for specific scientific disciplines. Uh, next. Perfect. So for that reason, um, we previously funded events that are themed around um, regional open science, um, but for this one, we're really interested in kind of a discipline specific focus. Um, so we've given some examples here. These are to be taken as illustrations. So it's to totally not limited to these examples, but we just wanted to kind of give a flavor of the types of um, event topics that might fit within the core remit. So if you're interested in hosting an event that's going to kind of bring together people who want to advance open science hardware in space science, in imaging, in neuroscience, microscopy, conservation tech, oceanography, chemistry, 
um, those are all very applicable. We're also um, open to uh, events that want to advance the study of open science hardware in kind of social science fields, so science and technology studies, for example. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, promoting kind of the development and use of the open science hardware itself, but it can be slightly meta and kind of looking at advancing open science hardware through different um, disciplines that are more engaged with researching that as a, a kind of a topic of interest itself. Um, so, so those are some examples. Next slide, please, Brie. Um, so your application process, it's pretty simple. The, um, we've tried to keep the questions fairly straightforward and we put in kind of approximate word uh, limit suggestions. They're not really limits. So when we're not going to be, um, you know, putting character count limits on anything or checking if you've stayed within them, it's really just in a way to say, you don't need to write too much for this. It's not intended to be, you know, multiple, multiple pages of application. Um, so the key information in terms of submitting and practicalities is that the deadline is February the 15th. Um, so you have plenty of time, uh, nine days to think about it. Um, we use the anywhere on earth time zone, which basically means that as long as it's the 15th of February somewhere, then you're submitting within the deadline. Um, so basically by 12 UTC on the 16th, we would expect all the applications in. Um, late applications would then not be assessed to make it you know, fair to everybody. Um, we have up to 7,500 US dollars available per event, and the total fund across the program is $20,000. So um, if you are applying for a smaller amount of money, we can basically fund more grants out of the same pot. Um, so, you know, we do welcome um, applying for funding up to 7,500, but bear in mind that if you can run your event successfully for less than that, um, we would encourage you to kind of apply for less because you're more likely to get the the full amount or any award at all. Um, if we get all of our applications for 7,500, then that's only a few events that we can fund. So we'll definitely be looking to kind of spread out um, both the disciplines that we're awarding funding to, and also the kind of size and scale of events that we're awarding funding to. Um, so basically the, the smaller the amount, the more you're likely to get it is a big message that I would send out. But if you require $7,500, to run a successful event, then absolutely put that budget in because it's what you need. Um, you don't need a previous relationship or involvement with GOSH. You do not need to have attended a GOSH gathering. Um, you don't need to be an active participate, participant on the GOSH forum. Um, so we're open to applications from, from anybody. Um, and the, the proposals can be for virtual events, they can be for in-person events, or they can be for hybrid events, but they are for events. So we're expecting um, something to happen. Um, it can be a, you know, a one day workshop, a two day workshop. It can be a series of meetings. It can be a one off two hour webinar. We're very open to, to the kind of formats. You should decide what is gonna be the most successful format to make the change that you want to make. Um, there are some eligibility criteria beyond this. So you, as I think I mentioned several times now, you do need to have a clear focus on promoting or advancing open science hardware within a specific discipline. Um, so for example, we're unlikely to be funding this time around um, training events or workshops that are uh, focused on, you know, say primary or high school education. Um, we're really interested in kind of advancing open science hardware within scientific research within a specific discipline. Um, we're also much less likely this time around to fund stuff that has a very strong regional focus. Um, so we did have a regional events round. Um, this time we're, we're really, it's it's possible to apply for a particular discipline within a particular region, um, but most likely there will be preference given to events that are really trying to look at how do you advance open science hardware in this discipline on a global scale. Um, and the, the uh, eligibility, eligibility criteria also include that the event should be aligned with the GOSH Code of Conduct and the Manifesto, which, as Brie mentioned um, already, are resources that we have on our website, um, and basically just uh, talk about the kind of values of the GOSH community. Um, in general, it, it's quite difficult to be misaligned with these, I think. Um, they're, they're basically fairly straightforward in terms of sharing information and having a very open approach. So I think if, if your approach is 
aligned with open source practices, it's highly likely to be aligned with our uh, manifesto, at least. Um, and the code of conduct, we would just anticipate that you implement the code of conduct at the events that you're running. Um, that there's no specific question in the application about that, but it is an expectation of the project. Um, so we would expect at a later date that you demonstrate that you are happy to um, make the code of conduct or a, a similar code of conduct a part of your event planning. Uh, next screen, please, Bree. Great, okay, so the, we're just gonna go through the three main selection criteria. Um, Number one is how the event will promote or advance open science hardware within the specified scientific discipline. So in that case, we're thinking about, you know, uh, how impactful will this be? How many people are you bringing together? Um, what are the kind of goals of the project? Is this the first meeting that has ever been on open science hardware within that specific discipline? Um, if not, how are you building on previous efforts? Um, what likelihood is there of this event having a tangible impact on moving things forward? And so I'd say just be very realistic in your application about the goals of the event and how you intend to meet them. Um, if your intention is to raise awareness, that's an absolutely fine intention. And so you can kind of talk about how you're going to raise awareness that open science hardware exists within a particular discipline in these particular ways. Um, if you feel like in your discipline there is awareness and you really need to move it on to the next level, then we'd be looking for, you know, how are you going to promote more engagement in the topic? How are you going to get into deeper conversations with people? Um, so just really consider, like, what is the what is the change that you intend to make and how will your event contribute to that? Uh, next slide, please, Bri. Um, what are the broad impacts of your event for the global open science hardware community? So I think global is a key thing. So as I mentioned, this is not a regional events funding round. Um, so while it's fine to have an event that kind of primarily convenes people from a specific region, we're really looking for impact across the discipline. Um, and so, you know, you would want to outline in your um, proposal and the, the review panel will be looking at what are you planning to happen after the event? Um, again, if it's an awareness raising type of event, um, that potentially a one-off event is, is going to do its job and you don't need much follow-up. But I think we'd really want to see a kind of plan for how this fits into a longer term goal of expanding open science hardware. Um, what useful documentation or lessons or publications are going to come from your event? How are you going to share them with the world and what impact do you think that they will have? Um, and how will the people involved in the event, which could be you and your team, uh, or could be the attendees, continue the ideas and projects encountered at the event. Um, and so if your event is intended to be a one-off and job done, you need to explain in your um, proposal why that's the case. If it's intended to be a kind of start of something bigger, like a series of events, or um, you anticipate that some collaborations will emerge from it, it'd be really great to hear that um, explained in your application um, and you know why you think it's going to take forward um, open science hardware more generally, even potentially beyond the specific discipline. Uh, next slide, please, Brie. OK, and then the third one is kind of the practical side. So how feasible is your event application? Bearing in mind that you're only going to get up to a maximum of $7,500. <laughs> there are limitations on what you can do in terms of an event. So um, we are not anticipating that you're going to be organizing a 200 person conference. Right. So um, we want to understand, like, is what you're proposing feasible? Will it happen? Um, have you and, and your team got um, a sort of some experience or some, um, you know, clear ideas as to how you're going to make this work? Um, obviously, if you have previous events experience, that's great. You can include that. If you don't, that's OK, too. We'd just be looking for kind of, you know, the fact that your the ideas that you're putting down are a, 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 a seem achievable um, within the budget that you proposed and also within the timeline that you proposed because these are quite short grants so we're expecting reporting in June um, which means that you know very very complex setups and pre-work and pre-meetings or series of meetings might be a bit more complicated so really be clear on the timeline for your event um, and how kind of feasible that is. Uh, next slide, please, Brie. Um, okay, so if you are awarded funding, 
there are obviously certain responsibilities that come with that and we've tried to make it as lightweight as possible um, because we appreciate this is you know it's it's not a huge amount of money to fund someone's time to help with this and that many of the applicants are doing uh, this excellent work in their spare time around other responsibilities. Um, so we would expect that you post at least one pre-event update on the GOSH forum, which can be the announcement that you've got the funding and what you plan to do. It could be a call for applications, um, we don't mind. Um, post at least one post-event update on the GOSH forum. So put a forum post out there saying what happened to the event, who came, how was it? Um, this can be like a, a kind of extensive report or it can be a sort of blog style um you know highlights that you you then follow up with a, a sort of more substantial piece of documentation and so that's the the third responsibility is that we're expecting um something to come out that will tangibly benefit the open science hardware community so this could be a report on the event which details you know challenges and opportunities for open science hardware in neuroscience what needs to happen in the next five years to give a very kind of generic report example it doesn't have to be a report i mean you could submit something that you're um you're going to develop something specific for that community like I don't know you're going to run a, a hackathon to put together a directory of all the tools for open for chemistry open science hardware for example um, in that case we'd be expecting that the outputs which would be the data and the kind of a directory would itself be open source so whatever comes out should be shared under the appropriate open source license and we're expecting one product to, to at least one <laughs> to emerge that is you know, tangible and shareable. Um, and then finally, you would need to submit links to all of the above items and also a financial report, which is a very simple spreadsheet um, to the Open Science Hardware Foundation, which is the organization that administers the funding. Uh, next screen brief. Um, and timeline. You've got till the 15th of February to submit your application. Uh, we hope to have a fairly fast review process and let you know by the end of the month if you have been successful. And then you'll run your event and submit your final reports by the 15th of June. And as mentioned, all of these dates uh, imply anywhere on earth um, time zone deadlines. Uh, next slide, Brie. Great. And so, um, you can find the applications on the uh, GOSH forum or the website, uh, fairly easily Googleable. Uh, hopefully we'll share these slides with you um, later and you can click here as well. And you can do two things with your application. If you want to make it public, you can post it on the forum. If you prefer not at this time, you can send it via email to admin at Open Hardware Science. Uh, next, please. And yeah, if you've got any questions, we do have a question thread going on the forum and some people have already been active in asking things, whether it's to do with the, the deadlines or the submission or um, the eligibility criteria, or if your thing is in scope, um, feel free to put a question there. Or if you prefer to do it um, more privately, you can email us at admin as openhardware.science and we will attempt to get back to you as soon as possible. I would urge to not do this within, say, 48 hours of the deadline, um, because all of the people who have access to admin at openhardware.science um, work part time. And so uh, we may not have time to get back to you. So do make sure if you do have questions, you try and post them as early as possible. Thanks, Brie.